So, this is the Milwaukee 4094 drive motor off from my Climax boring rig. And it smoked a set of brushes today. Now that happens every once in a while, but today when it happened, I pulled the brushes. I always take a look at the commutator and she looked a little sketchy in there. So I slapped a new set of brushes in and immediately knew she was time for a teardown. It was arc and light mad. Um, it did this once before, right after I got this. I bought it used. It was six years old when I got it. And it ate a set of brushes almost immediately after I got it. And then the commutator was hurt. And I pulled it down, turned the commutator, oh. undercut the insulation, and it's been running good ever since. But So we're getting ready to tear this sucker down and see, hopefully, if we can get away with doing that again. Because it's getting nearly impossible to get parts for these... Uh, this series Milwaukee motor. So anyway, I so thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. First thing I'm gonna do is take my new brushes back out. Um, so this, by the way, is the uh, drive motor to the uh, Climax BB5000. Now, since then, they've got some new German motor or something that they wanna sell you for gazillions of bucks to upgrade, but I like how my Milwaukee works just fine, so. I'm actually hunting to see if I can find another one of these motors used. Um, Climax custom machined the drive shaft stuff, but I figure, or uh, not drive shaft, the uh, output shaft for their application. But I figure if I find one, I can figure that out. So. All right, so my new brushes look fine. I ran it a little bit, just enough to finish the cut. And... Uh, I don't think we've heard it, heard it yet. It's just I've got a couple of commutator bars that for some reason it's arcing on. And that makes a stinking lot of heat. So you can cook one like dead dead in a pretty big hurry. So I got some motivation to make sure we get this thing straightened out. Healed. I don't need to be frying unobtainable parts. And honestly, I've had it in the back of my head that this day was coming. I, I knew that. So... What I can't remember, it's been long enough since I did it, is exactly what is involved with getting this apart. I don't remember exactly where all this thing splits at, so I'm going to be learning along with you to some extent. I just know that on any brush type motor, one of the first, if not the first things you ought to be doing is yanking the brushes or you'll guaranteed wreck some brushes somewhere along the way in the process. Last time, I know I had the gearbox apart and I repacked it with grease, but I can't remember if that was because I had to or if I just did that as part of my maintenance procedure because it's been four years since I tore it apart last and I'm quite certain it's got plenty of grease in it because I overpacked it. It's been oozing grease out ever since I had it apart that time, so... We're about to find out here. Okay, so yeah, you can see plenty of grease in there. We'll just redistribute that stuff around when we go back together. But now here's what I cannot for the life of me remember. Is did I have to take it apart there? Or did it just come apart voluntarily there like it did here? Hmm. I guess I should look the gears and stuff over in here. Everything I can see looks good. 
Say this is the part that I'm quite hazy on. I just don't remember what was involved. In the... Getting the next segment down apart. So let's take a look at this together. All right, we can get it to focus in on it. So you can see she's got some pretty good wear on it. And then right here, see these uh, couple of burnt commutator bars? There's another one. That's where the trouble is really at. So we definitely need to get this thing set up on the lathe and return it. There's just no doubt about it. This is probably about the last round for this one. I can see that I had turned more off from it last time than I remembered. She needs a pretty good turning job this time, so. Alright, well, I'll get figured out how to get it apart and bring you guys back. Okay, so it was just this bearing was, you know, a snuggish fit into the housing on top. I just had to tap it out of there. I'm going to clean this bearing out and repack it while I'm at it. Anyway, we're ready to go get this thing set up in the lathe and return this commutator. So... I will uh, get rolling with that, bring you guys back when I get that figured out. All right, see how she spins once. That looks good. So the trick here is when you're turning copper, it's very sticky gummy and it wants to roll over. I only use high speed tool steel, carbide just makes a mess of it and I sharpen it to a point, no radius, nothing. Anyway, we're going to come in here and touch off. You can see I'm just cutting back on the edges a little. Right now I'm just out here on the ends. It's all quite worn where the brushes were running. Just now starting to touch. center. I think I'm going to engage the uh, feed so I can try and keep a nice even. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Let me just engage the feed. There it is. So I'll show you guys a minute now what it is that's going on. So when you've taken a few light cuts, it becomes much more obvious. See this? Full contact here. 
And then still substantial wear here. And that's where that arcing and sparking comes from. It starts making your brushes jump. And this is why you don't want to let it get very bad at all before you pay attention to this. Because once it starts that, it's basically built an arc welder inside of your motor. And it will burn that baby to the ground. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can see even with a sharp point on it, see how gnarly, gnarly the burrs and stuff are. I'll go ahead and cut it until I get full clean up and then it'll be time to polish it a bit. All right, well, she's uh, buffed, polished, ready to go back together again. Um, I think we're going to save her. I do think, I did a little hunt around online. I can get a new armature for about 150 bucks, and I think it's about the last turning for it. The bars are getting a little thin, so I think I'm going to go ahead and order me a new one of these up and just have it on hand. But for now, we're going to get her back together, so I'm going to repack this bearing, and we're going to get Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty together again. All right, well, she should be all good to go, ready to put back on the uh, motor, or on, not on the motor, on the boring rig tomorrow and get back at her. We'll see how she goes. New antices on, and we'll slip her back on there and hopefully get on the boring job again tomorrow. So I'll bring you guys back next time. I'll probably show you some footage of that boring project happening, but I figured you might like to see the insides of one of these while I was at it, so... Catch you later.